all right hi everyone i welcome you all into this session number 2 on apis uh, in the last session we tried to understand uh, basically about web services right so basically we started with soa right because this is the core around web services we understood that soa is about two things what are those services and messages services and messages right what are services Reverse a business business functionality functionality or or a a software function. Yes, it is some kind of a business functionality or a software function, right? And uh, what we understood is these are the services which are accessible over the web, and these services are implemented with the help of concept of web services, right? What are the two types of web services we have? rest and soap rest and soap and every rest yeah so we have soap based services web services and rest based web services so uh, is rest a protocol no it's an architecture it's an architecture right what does rest stands for representational representational state state transfer representational state transfer which is the transport protocol used in rest http http right what about soap is it an architecture or a protocol 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 it is a xml based messaging protocol right so what are the different transport protocols we can use within soap ftp smtp ftp smtp http http also right there are some more maybe we can use imap also i believe okay you can explore on that uh then we started talking little bit about uh specifications right so we talked about client server architecture because service oriented architecture works more like a client server architecture there is a service consumer there is a service provider there is one more entity which is that there is a service consumer there is a service provider and in some cases we might need to take help of one more orchestrator orchestrator service registry right why do we need service registry marketplace to publish the uh, details of the service very nice it's like a marketplace wherein we can publish the details about the service so that different uh, service consumers right uh, which can come in the future which whom we do not know can come and basically find the details of our service and they can uh, basically go through the details and once they find the service specifications are good enough they can go and basically subscribe for the service right okay i think we all understand all these things uh, after that Uh, we talked about XML, right? So, any any two rules you can talk about which are very important from XML standpoint? Any two rules about yes, XML? It should be well-formed and validated. Should have a root element. Should have a root. It should have a root element, and every start element should have an end corresponding element. Yeah. very nice it must have a root element we cannot have an xml file without a root element each starting element should have a ending element must have corresponding it should have a, yeah an xml should have a prologue yes very nice xml should have a prologue then all the elements are case sensitive it forms a hierarchy of elements right we can have parents elements we can have child elements what are the classification different types of elements based on their classifications whether they store the data or further elements in the in themselves what are the different classifications do we have simple, simple complex, complex and mechanical complex, 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 complex and complex and mixed that is mixed yeah yes we have simple elements complex elements and mixed elements right so simple element will typically hold the data directly like you know your numbers strings float values 
complex will typically hold another elements within itself and these would uh, typically represent some kind of a business entity or an object like employees orders invoices items all these kind of stuff mix means it will have data as well as the further elements within itself right we understood all these things what is the difference between well formed xml and a valid xml or are these same no valid xml valid xml no. will be well formed with some schema it should be it is the one which is well formed plus schema compliant it is schema compliant well formed means syntactically correct right what is the meaning of schema compliant it should follow the, uh, the structure the defined in the uh, wiz general very nice it should follow the structure defined by the service provider i can say and where is that structure defined you can say in the specifications and that specifications are provided in case of soap it is provided with the help of a visual file what does visual stand for Web service description. Web service description language. Very nice. Web service description language or definition language. Description. Description, right? So that means it only provides the details about the web service, what a web service can do, but it does not tell, or basically it is not used for the implementation of the web services, but it describes the details about the web service, or you can say it describes the signature of the web service, right? Right. So in which language is this visual written? XML. XML. It is an XML based file, right? Which is the root element in the visual file? Definition. definition. Description. Root element is definitions. Okay, I did not talk at length, but I asked you to observe. We will talk more on this. That's fine. In visual, there is a section where the structure of the request and response is defined. Which is that section? schema very nice schema schema is a section which is used to define the structure of request and response messages what are messages some sort of data right that is exchanged among the services right it is nothing but the data which is exchanged among the services very nice what are the diff two different types of schemas SSD and XSLD. Internal schema, external schema. If you will see yesterday's notes, I just wrote internal and external, and even Priyanka asked that what does it mean. I told we will talk about it, but we have not talked yet, right? There are two types of schemas, or there are two ways to represent schemas. One is called as internal schema, another is called as external schema. Okay. Now, if I am a service provider, if you want to consume my service, and if I am a service provider of a soap service. What do you need from me to consume the soap service effectively? Specifications. You need the specifications. Nice. And the specifications of the soap service are represented with the help of visual file. Visual file, right? And visual file can be shared as a file, or it can be also shared as URL. URL. No. Very nice. Visual URL. If you know the endpoint of the service, if we know the endpoint of the service. Can we generate the visual URL? Yeah, we, we need to append question mark and visual. Very nice. We can just append question mark visual to the endpoint. Yes. All right. I think uh, the response is really good. I am sure that many of you or majority of you have followed what we discussed. If you have not followed, please go through the recording. uh those who were not there in yesterday's session and have straight away joined today's session i am not sure how much you would follow so you can give it a try if you don't follow i can't help you much okay because these all sessions are required to be attended without fail right then only you will basically follow the sequence all right so let's let's move on guys uh, we talked about the visual and all and now we told uh, if you just see the notes i told in tomorrow session we will continue 
visual xsd and namespaces okay so we'll continue with the visual xsd namespaces so so far have we seen any sample visual file yes calculator okay so now if let's say i give you a soap service i give you a visual file also so before you use it in your code what is the best way to see that if the service is working properly or not very nice we have a lot of uh, women power in this batch i mean there are a lot of i hardly speak any male candidate speaking but yeah it's good it's a soap ui soap ui is a testing tool where you can you know embed the visual url that tool has a capacity to parse your visual it will parse the visual and it will generate a sample payload what is payload sample data yes payload actually the true meaning of payload is nothing but request message is called as payload request message or data right whatever you pass is called as payload in integration world we will use payload terminology very very frequently so you should know whenever anybody is referring to payload they are by default referring to request messages sometimes people might say request payload response response payload that's fine but typically payload means your request message all right so now so it becomes very easy uh, sorry it becomes very important for us to understand visual file because uh, you know visual file sometime uh, can be not so easy to interpret even by tools and if you know that what visual is going to do or what is the capability of the visual i mean it really becomes easy to consume the service right if you know what are the capabilities of the service then it becomes really easy these days whatever tools we have right for example if we talk about dell bumi and all the consume the consumption part is pretty simple it's fairly easy but if you know the visual you will have a much more confidence and even there are some corner cases some some of the soap services might be obsolete old services which cannot which sometimes do not work straight away you might have to tweak few things so you will have an idea what to be so what are the things we need to take care of right so visual is a xml file and if it is a xml file it must have a root element yes or no yes so here definitions is the root element so which is the root element definitions so whatever data or whatever description we write about the web service with the help of a visual file we write with the within the definitions element so this is the root elements so with the definitions element there will be an attribute this is how you write the attribute attributes are basically defined with the elements and these provide some additional information about the element and here the name will depict the name of the service so for example my name of the service is let's say calculator right so whatever whatever name is written over here that depicts the name of the service right after that you might see lot of things like this xmlns equal to blah 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 xmlns colon ns1 equal to blah blah and some of you might be already knowing it there are there might be few people who do not understand about this which is fine we will understand it in due course of time for now we will park it okay i don't want to bombard you with too much of information first let's understand the structure right and then gradually we will understand each and every bit of the code which is written in the visual file right so now what happens over here is within the definitions there are multiple different other elements so there is another element called a schema there is an element called as schema element what does this element do this element is responsible for defining the structure of request and response messages so you typically use this section to define the structure of the request and response messages right and please understand in this section right there can be two possibilities one is the complete code to define the structure is written the complete code to define the structure is written in the visual file itself it is written in the visual file itself between the schema elements right 
then in that case in that case it is called as inline schema inline schema or internal schema it is called as inline schema which means inline schema means you are defining the structure of the request and response messages within this schema elements and the complete structure definition is present within the visdal file itself then it is called as inline schema right please understand this complete code okay there is another possibility where the complete code to define the structure of the request and the response right the complete code to define the structure of request and response messages is written where outside the visdal file it is written outside the visdal file and how it is written it is written outside the visdal file and that there is a separate file called as xsd file this file is imported within the visdal file this methodology of defining the schema is called as external schema so what i'm trying to say is there are two methodologies to define your schema one is inline schema what we do in inline schema is the complete code to define the structure of the request and response right that complete code is written within the visdal file itself and that is called as an inline schema there are cases where you will not write the complete code to define the structure of the request and response within the visdal file but you will write it in a separate file and that separate file is later on imported over here and that methodology is called as external schema so to the end user you might expose a visdal file but within the visdal file you will have reference to which files you will have reference to some separate files and those files are called as xsd files okay what is the full form of xsd xml schema definition okay so xsd is a language which is used to define the structure of the xml and this xsd itself is also xml xsd is used to define the structure of xml and xsd itself is also a xml file right visdal is also a xml file isn't it so now what we'll do is before we move forward yesterday we saw one visdal right which one was that Calculator. Some calculator online visual, right? Isn't it? Okay, let me see if it works. Yesterday there was some issue here. Okay, I so I am not sure if it is the same visual, but that's fine. But there is visual over here, which is so it's not for sure. It's not the same visual which we saw yesterday, but then. Here there is visual. That's fine. So can can a service expose multiple operations? Yes. So I'll go and I will search operation. Okay. How many operations do you see? Four. How many? Four. 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 And which? What are those? Addition, subtraction, subtract, multiply, divide, divide. Addition. subtract multiply divide okay so there are four operations which are part of the visual file in yesterday's visual how many operations were there two two there were two adding right? subtract and so if you remember we had that visual over here also right if we want to see that visual we'll go here in the new tab we will open that visual also so that you can draw a comparison how many operations forget about binding section okay that is something actually that is repetition of this operations only how many operations two right add subtract yeah. whereas in this visual how many operations subtract multiply add and divide yes or no so now you tell me one thing is there a schema section in this one we can search for 
schema. Okay, can you find a schema section? Yeah. Yes. Is there a schema section? Yes. So the schema section, actually, I think I'm. So there is a schema section which is fine, but actually that schema is part of. So there is a definitions element, and within definitions there is a types element. Types is like a data type which is used to define all the data types, and within types we have the schema, right? So I told you there are two ways to define the schema. Yes or no? One is called as an inline schema, internal. and other is a internal or inline schema, and other is called as external schema. External. Now you take a look at it. There is a types element. Type here. Type indicates the data types. Okay, and within types, can you see schema? Yes. Now you tell me. In this case, does it look like an inline schema or external schema? External schema. External schema. Why external schema? Excellent. We have an import. We have an import. We are trying to refer refer a separate file. Yes. And what is the location of that separate file? Yeah. Yes. So you can open a new tab. You can open here. Can you see there is a schema definition? Yes. Which is the root element over here? Schema. schema so when you define a schema the root element is schema itself the name of the element is schema what is the name of the root element in the visual file definition definition definitions so within definitions we have types and within types we define the schema which can be inline or external so in this case it is external schema right and this file is being imported into the visual yes or no Now there is one more visual, which we saw yesterday. How many operations? Two operations, right? You go on the top. Do you have some type section? Yes. 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 Within types, do you have schema? Yes. Now is it an inline schema? Inline. 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 inline schema, right? Why? Because the structure is defined within the visual file itself. we are not referring a separate file so this is an example of inline schema we can have a mix scenario also that for some of the elements structure is defined over here and for some of the elements structure is defined outside in a separate file and so it can be a mix also so there is no such hard and fast rule we may have inline we may have external we may have a mix also right so i will repeat we started with the definitions element within definitions element okay you will find a types element and types is basically reserved to define the complete structure for your request and response then there is another important element called as port type there is an important element called as port type okay so you can think port type represents the it represents a collection of operations okay it represents a collection of operations supported at a particular port of the service so it represents a collection of operations supported at a particular port of the service so when you will expose a service there will be a port and if somebody accesses that port what are the different operations supported by the service those operations are listed under port type okay so can can a service expose more than one operation yes absolutely yes so we will write for example here you will see operation name is equal to let's say add operation name is equal to let's say subtract okay likewise we can have many operations so there is an operation name is equal to add operation name is equal to subtract and likewise we can have many operations right so there is no such limit that we can have only two operations we can have n number of operations and these all operations are clubbed into a element and that element is called as port type schema Port type, right? Schema ended over here. Types ended over here, and now it is your port type. 
and port type is nothing but collection of operations supported by the service in this case how many operations are being supported two two operations right two, two operations now it is very very important to understand there can be three types of operations in soap this is very very important not only from the soap standpoint even from the integration standpoint because these types of operations also de defines a type of communications we can have right whenever you are working on any integration interface there can be three different types of communication you can have one is synchronous another is asynchronous and the third is one way similarly the operations which we define over here these can be either synchronous asynchronous or one way what is synchronous when request and response are immediate an operation is said to be synchronous when there is an immediate response when there is an immediate response with this with through the same channel the, through the same channel okay to the when there is an immediate response to the request being instantiated i think somebody has watched my videos already but that's fine the request and response traverses via same channel very very important point another important point is the requester who is requester your client right will keep on waiting for the response right the requester will keep on waiting for the response so now let's say you place an order for an iphone through amazon.com you hit the payment button then do you wait for the response or after that just you click the button and you go away and you leave it and you close the window what do you do Wait, we'll wait. We'll wait, right? Because it might be costing a lot of money. So you want to see whether that whole operation or the transaction has been successful or not, right? So you fired a request. That request. So you are a client. When I am saying you are a client, your web browser is a client, right? You are a user. Who is the client for the server? Web browser is the client, right? So it fired a request that goes to the server. Server processes that request. and you or your client or your browser is expecting a response out of that and until the response comes back you keep on waiting for the response right so this is called as a synchronous communication and this request and response traverses via same channel channel means like whatever connection we establish the whole exchange of data happens over the same connection the whole exchange of data happens over the same connection so that is called as a synchronous communication right synchronous communications or synchronous communications are typically short lived and short lived is also called as transient okay you will hear these terminologies frequently when you are working in the integration world what i am saying is synchronous communications are typically short lived and transient right so for example i give you a call right i will give you a call to basically get the feedback of the training so i'll ask you like what did you like about the training right so will i wait for the response or i will just tell that how 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 did you find the training what is your feedback so will i wait for the response or i will just say my message and i will disconnect the phone wait for the response we'll wait for the response right so yeah. for example you i give you a call i greet you i say you hi so i will wait for your response right and the whole communication is happening on the same channel isn't it right i establish a connectivity with you by making a call to you a connection got established i am sending a request you are responding i am sending a request you are responding so the whole communication happens through the same channel it these are generally short lived right if i'll say you hi i will continuously wait right so when i'm waiting you will try to make sure that my wait time is less right yes or no yes yes another example is let's say i go to college right 
maybe i i get into some kind of argument with my friend i slap him and he slaps me back immediately i gave a request and he responded i i too did an action and there was a reaction immediately this is synchronous right yes yes you proposed the girl and that girl accepted immediately that is synchronous right don't start proposing after hearing this session but that is a example of synchronous communication asynchronous communication means delayed response okay an operation delayed is said response. to be asynchronous when there is a delayed response delayed response with different channel okay and that delayed response is actually called as call back actually we should not call it as a response what should we call it as call back call back the request and response or we can also call this as a call back these traverses via different channel different channel means how many connections two different connections one connection will be established by the client to the server and server will take some time to process the request and then server will do a call back okay the requester will not wait for the response okay the sir, the requester will know that i will get the response but it will not wait for the response it can continue doing some other activities okay it can continue doing some other activities asynchronous communications are typically long running these are typically long running which is also called as durable okay so what is the example so for example i send you an email that please complete this assignment okay as soon as possible there are maybe five questions right so what what will you do typically will you complete that immediately or you will you will do you will send a response but that will be a delayed response response will be send. delayed so here what happens is the response is delayed right you send a request the moment request reaches to the server there will be some kind of acknowledgement that you will know as a client that my request reached to the server and after that your job is done okay after that your job is done you don't care it is the responsibility of the server it is the responsibility of the server to uh do a call back so there are so many examples for example i give you a call and you were in a meeting right so i i passed my request to you that request reached to you i try to establish a connection connection got established request reached to you but my call was not answered maybe you were busy in a meeting so after that maybe i go and start taking a session on bumi then after that after some time your meeting is over and if you want to talk to me what you will do you will do a call back right yes, yes or no you yeah, will yeah. do a, you will do a call back so yeah. i i gave you a call you were busy with something you couldn't answer my call so but i am sure that my call has reached to you right i could ring i could hear the ring so what i'll do is maybe i will continue with my some other work and whenever you are free to talk you will do a call back so how many connections got established two 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 connection right first connection was started by whom the requester yeah, right the client and second connection was started by whom server 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 so in a case of asynchronous there will be two different channels two different connections right so the example is you propose a girl right that girl will tell the girl say that okay i will discuss with, with my father and i will let you know so there will be a response but then there is a delayed response right there is a delayed response so that is kind of an example of asynchronous communication and whenever you get any integration requirement right you go to the business 
you understand their requirement then you have to start putting that requirement that you have to understand whether it is synchronous asynchronous or one way if they have a business use case which will run for long time what should be a recommendation how should you design it whether you should design it as synchronous or asynchronous asynchronous asynchronous, asynchronous. very nice okay so in case of asynchronous uh, i mean generally uh your process will be long running but this is not mandatory and whenever you see that the process is long running then your recommendation should be to go for asynchronous right the next thing is the next type is one way which is also called as fire and forget there is one more thing one way which is like fire and forget for example you write the data into the file do you get any acknowledgement back no you even you might have seen in bumi right when you perform disk write operation do you get any document out of that connector back when you try to insert the data into the database do you see any document coming outside no no right so one way operation means an operation is said to be one way when there is no response at all any question so far sumit so, can we get one example of synchronous and asynchronous in real time like yes uh, yeah. okay so for example the synchronous example as i told right let's say you are making an online payment okay yeah or maybe you place an order do you get an order number immediately yes yes, yes? okay yes. now let's say you go and make a payment via bill desk for your credit card i am sure some of you might have done it for sure if you are having a credit card and if you are trying to make a payment using bill desk so or so do you get a confirmation that the payment has been received in the bank's account immediately no it takes some time it takes some time right it so it you just get one acknowledgement what is acknowledgement that you will get the status maybe within 48 hours something like that and when the processing is actually done you get notified maybe via email or via sms that your payment has been received in the account another example we talk about you go to your company and let's say now you you have to go for vacation so you typically will go and apply the leave right so when you apply the leave in the system does it get auto approved does it get immediately approved no no right after applying the leave do you wait yes you wait i mean but do you wait means you keep on looking at the system that my leave will uh you know be approved and then only i will do the next task or you apply it and after that you leave it and whenever it is approved you will get an email that your leave is approved or else you will have some portal where the status will get updated as approved yes or no yes correct you go for applying an interview right you give the interview then what do we, what do they say we will get back to you right so yes. so you will they will send you some kind of acknowledgement uh, they they tell you that okay your interview is done now you go back to home we will do a call back or we will get back to you maybe after two days or three days they will notify you that whether you are selected or you are going to the next round in india typically we don't get a feedback if you are not selected then it becomes like one way but typically you do get a call back right so in it right when we are doing the integrations and all so whenever we will have long running processes right another example is uh think of a scenario when you go to dominos right you go to dominos you place an order for pizza so you know how many how, how much time does dominos claim to prepare the pizza 30 minutes right generally it is 30 minutes or maybe it is less than that i don't remember uh if it is so do you wait on the counter for 30 minutes no you place the order maybe you go to uh, you go and occupy the seat seat you do chit chat you might talk over the phone with someone and whenever the order is ready who is responsible for doing a call back who is responsible for displaying that uh, your order number on the 
dis, uh, digital board dominos people dominos people right because they are the service provider so these all are examples of asynchronous communication okay thank you all right now why i told all this story is because this is important to know when you are working in integration world another important thing is when you go through the visual file a visual can expose n number of operations or in other words i can say a service can expose n number of operations and there might be a service in which some of the operations are synchronous some of them might be asynchronous and there might be few which is one way so we can have a heterogeneous scenario hybrid scenario where we have a synchronous operation asynchronous operation and a one way operation now looking at the visual file how do you find out that whether the given operation is a synchronous asynchronous or one way so when whenever in the operation whenever you in the operation you see input and output then what is the meaning of that if you see synchronous. input and output both two way communication if you see input and output both that means for this operation you have to send a request and you will also get a output response response, response. output indicates response so you you will see something like this input message equal to something will be written okay let's say that something is addition request message and it again for output it will be something like this message is equal to addition response addition request message addition result or addition response message whatever it is that's fine right so now what what it is trying to indicate is within a port type there is a operation the name of the operation is add it is a whether it is a synchronous operation asynchronous or one way synchronous, synchronous. why synchronous because we have both input and output right and this is indicating that this for this input what is the message name addition request message now by seeing at this name do we understand the actual structure we need to pass we don't understand it right isn't it by seeing at this message name we don't understand the actual structure so i will talk about that structure but let's first complete about operation let's say there is one more operation in which it is like input message equal to subtract request message so now which operation is this one is an asynchronous which one asynchronous one way one way so it is definitely not synchronous it can be either one way or asynchronous now how do you differentiate whether it is asynchronous or one way whenever you will have asynchronous communication how many channels are required two channels two channels, two channels. Two channels right so each channel is represented with the help of port type so in those kind of visual files you will have minimum two port types how many port types will be there two port types two port types so if at all you have even if you have a single operation which is synchronous you will have two port types right so how it will look like you know so there will be a port type so this port type will also will have some name for example for this port type name is equal to calculator and there will be one more port type which will have name as calculator let's say callback something so there is no hard and fast rule on the names you can define it as per your own choice and here there will be one more operation which will be so name can be anything but typically it will be subtract callback and maybe subtract response callback message okay so you can write response also that is fine but another important thing you have to understand is for the whenever you see the definition of the callback operation here you will not see output but you will see input only so you can also say asynchronous communication 
is more or less a combination of two one way operations the first one way operation is instantiated from the client to the server and the second one way operation is instantiated from server to the client server to client right yeah yes we will not have anything like output now let's say there is one more operation multiply only this is written so now whether now is it synchronous asynchronous or one way one way it's one way right yes one way all right so this is one way now what we'll do is we'll go back to the visual files which we have seen so first of all can we find a port type yes can you see a port type here yes yes so first of all please understand whatever is written before colon that is not the name of the element okay what exactly is that i will tell you but actually that is a prefix but this is the name of the element i mean this the port type is the name of the element and this port type instance name has, is this which is fine how many operations two operations two operations about first let's talk about add okay so this is some documentation of add which is fine okay it documentation is kind of a optional element you may have it you may not have it now within this add you look at the add operation and you have to tell me whether it is synchronous asynchronous or one way synchronous synchronous it is a Synchronous, synchronous operation. Why? It, why is it considered as a synchronous operation? Input and output. Input and output. Output. It has got both input and output, so it is a synchronous operation. Okay. What about subtract? Synchronous. Synchronous operation. How many port types? Only one. There is only one. Only one port type. One so port type. type is the collection of operations, right? No. Yeah. Even for input, there is some message written. so by seeing that message do you understand what what i have to pass whether i have to pass two integers three integers five integers you don't understand anything right but what all it says is for input you have to send a message that's what i told you services communicate each other with each other by exchange of messages right so it is telling you that it will need some message for output it will return some message but what is the structure of that message right now we don't understand by looking at these names which is fine okay now we will do okay so here there is some uh visual i believe no this is not an example okay anyways that's fine i will show you asynchronous one i have not kept it handy but i will show you as we move on so i think you got some basic idea right now let's move on to the next thing now this message is whatever we have written over here these should have some definition right i mean writing the name as addition request message does not help the end user to understand what will be the actual message structure right so that message definition has to be there so typically there will be another element called as message where you will have the definition of the message message name is equal to let's say addition request so it will be exactly the same name which i give over here so here i will define the messages yes or no so it's like a function right in function if you want to pass some parameter you will give the definition right yes or no Yes. So message. Now this message. Now here, how many messages do we need? For addition request, we need one. For response, we need one. Addition response. Okay. Now let's assume a scenario. For subtraction, we need two integers. For addition, we need two integers. So the request, the request structure is same or not for both? Same. Same, right? if i need two integers for addition and if i need two integers for subtraction 
is the request structure same or different same 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 right so in that case what i can do is instead of defining the message name as addition request message i can give a generic name request message response message and the same request message i can use in addition input and the same i can use in subtraction input same i can use in addition response and the very same i can use in the subtraction callback also so the point i am trying to say is these messages are used to define the basically or give the definition of your input and if you feel your inputs are same you can even reuse it if you want to define them separately even that is fine right now within that message there will be something like part okay part is like parameter so here let's say part name is equal to input parameter you can give whatever name you want and here you will write some element element is equal to let's say add request or maybe yeah let's say let me write add request for example so this is message what i'm saying in the messages so there is a addition operation which has both input and output for input there is a message request message the request message will have a parameter and what is the data type of the parameter the data type is based on an element and the name of the element is let's say add request the name of the element is add request now still do you understand that what will be the structure you don't understand the structure right so these elements whatever we write over here are defined in which file or in which section these are defined in the schema section these are defined in which section these are defined in the schema yeah. section see this is the whatever i am explaining right now i am explaining you the way the modern wizards are defined okay some legacy wizards might not be exactly defined in this way that might change a bit more or less it will be same but your modern wizards or the latest wizards will be designed in this fashion the way i am explaining okay so where do we define the structure of this element or where do we define this data type exactly we define under under the schema section right and how many ways are there to define the schema two ways two and which are those inline 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 and external. Inline and external. Inline and external. very nice so now let's say if it is inline maybe this is my type section here it is a schema so what i'll do is i'll write element name is equal to add request element name is equal to add request and for each starting element there has to be a closing element i close it now this add request is the name of the element let's say it is a complex type of element complex type then there is a indicator something like sequence so sequence indicates that whatever elements you write within the sequence that should come in the request in the same order and here let's say i will define element name is equal to number 1 type is equal to integer element name is equal to number 2 type is equal to integer so this is how the definition of add request element looks like likewise i can define the definition of one more element let's say add response and here let's say i just write result integer i'll take this and here what i'll do is part name is equal to some it is not necessary the name of the parameter has to be input parameter you can give whatever name you want okay let's say output parameter 
and then element is equal to let's say add response so so you have to understand to one thing which is very very important whenever we are playing around in the visual there is a place where we will have the definition of the element and there is a place where we refer those elements so if you start looking at this here we are defining the operation or we are referring the operation now in this case is it the definition of the operation or we are referring the operation referring the operation we are defining the operation we are saying that there is an operation with the name addition which will have input which will have an output input will have a message request message output will have a message response message but when you talk about the message are you defining the message over here or are you referring the message referring the message we are referring the message over here and where is the definition of the message here right here is the definition of the message what is the message definition it is saying it will have one parameter and parameter is of which type it is of an element type and now here are we defining the element or are we referring the element what is this this is reference or definition this reference. is reference reference where is the definition here is the definition this t exist this is the place where you define the element and here this is your definition this all cycle goes in and that's how other day when we were working this request was formed okay i mean actually it was not this request the request looked something different we kind of uh, you know change the request but the request looked something different we can again take a look at it now there are some other elements also so first we will just summarize the root element is definitions within the definitions element there are multiple different elements one element which is basically used to define the different data types is types element and within types elements we can have schema there are two ways to define schema inline schema external schema then another element we have is port type what does port type indicate collection of operations channels number of channels so port type itself is kind of a channel or you can say the number of operations supported on a given channel number of support operations supported on a given connection so it basically represents the collection of operations how many types of operations can we have any three, three types three types we can have any number of operations but how many types three types three types right what are those synchronous synchronous one way one way we can have synchronous we can have asynchronous we can have one way if there are lot of operations given and if you have to find out whether a given operation is a synchronous or not how can you find it out uh, output parameter it will have it input and output, output. Yes, yeah, we will have both input and output. If yeah. in a file whether there is an asynchronous operation or not, how do you identify? With uh, whether Only. it has two port types. Very nice. It will have two port types. If there is a single port type, that means there is no asynchronous no. operation, right? All right. So for all these operations which we define, they will need some requests, and that request is signified in the form of what? in the form of message yes so there is another element where we define this message within message what is the element part part is like parameter can a message have more than one part yes it can have more than one part also right now it can have more than one part also in this message we are defining a part and part is an element so where are these elements defined where are these elements defined here in the schema schema in the schema very nice now what we will do is we will try to look at the visual file okay all right uh, see few things you will not understand right now don't worry don't get bothered first let's understand the structure okay so deliberately i have not covered some elements we will talk about those so we will not talk about binding right now and there is a service element okay we i mean when when i say we will not talk 
it does not means we will not talk ever but first let's understand this now there is a port type in this how many operations operations four operations four operations very nice so are those are these all operations synchronous asynchronous one way or it is a mixture all are synchronous 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 all synchronous very nice so if i want to see the structure of this if let's say i want to invoke subtract operation i need to know the structure of the request yes so what is the input it takes it takes a message and what is the name of the message subtract it will return a response and that response will be in the form of a message and what is that name of the message subtract yeah. response yeah. where can i find a definition of the subtract and subtract response schema no under the message, message section definition. first you have to go to the message definition right is this referring to schema or message 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 yes. right message. So you will go to subtract in subtract do you see a part yeah i told part is like a parameter um, is, it, is it referring an element yes and where is that element definition schema in the schema section do we have inline schema or external schema is an external external schema. external schema so now where do we have to go external schema external schema now when you go here can you see the definition of subtract subtract yeah. itself is it a simple element or a complex element simple complex 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 right complex complex right and within the subtract how many elements two elements two what elements. are the data types int integer integer right so how will your request look like your request will look like this your request will look like subtract subtract and what will be the name of the element int a, int b. int a. i mean this 10 i am writing i am assuming int b now which kind of service is it rest or soap soap soap, soap is which type of protocol xml uh, messaging protocol okay i told it is a xml based messaging protocol there is a standardized structure you need to follow for soap the standardized structure of the soap is actually i am not i was trying to install a tool j developer which i could not install install somehow it is failing in my machine when we will meet in the next session i will show you in that tool things will become more easy but i hope you are following but i will make it crystal clear standardized tool uh, so sorry so it has a standardized structure and what does that standardized structure says is so whenever you are working with soap the data will be always or the request which goes to the server will be enclosed the actual request which goes to the soap service must be always enclosed in soap envelope it must be always enclosed in soap envelope so you will see always an envelope element you will see something like this soap colon envelope something like xmlns soap there will be something like http www dot something like that www dot schemas dot org not maybe exactly i don't remember that namespace when we talk about namespace i will make you understand what does that mean but for the timing let's assume there is something like that and then we have, we need to have a closing element also so the name of the element is soap colon envelope or only envelope 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 is the name of the element the soap colon whatever you see this is called as a prefix and what does this prefix means we will explain you now within this envelope there can be a header header is kind of optional element it may be there it may not be there it is generally used to carry some kind of metadata that metadata can be sometimes the authorization information 
authentication information some additional information you want to pass you can use headers within that there will be a soap body so soap body is the place where your actual data is passed and your actual data will fit in over here something like this and this is how your request will look like but the point i am trying to say is that visdal is telling to the consumer that the name of the element has to be subtract then int a then int b it will not accept whatever xml you feel like there are guidelines about the structure of the xml so which section is responsible for defining the structure of the request schema section right so that can be inline schema or external schema whenever people are working on xml and they are talking about schema so by default you have to assume or you have to believe that they are talking about xsg which means xml schema definition yes even for json there is a way there is a something called as a json schema definition right now what we will do is we will go back to the service yes so this service is part of this one right we will take this service we'll go to the soap ui we'll create a project when we create a project how many operations four four how many binding here i told binding is like a the different ways we can connect yes or no yeah so, one, so here, one binding here, here how many bindings we had two. two two bindings so it means in how many different ways you can connect two two but here how many bindings only one, one. and with that one one binding how many operations you can access four four and now we will go straight to the subtract operation can you see the request is matching then what we created of course yes. this you forget about what is there before prefix but do you see the structure is matching there is a envelope element there is a optional header there is body there is subtract there is int a there is int b yes is that same thing what we wrote yes and how could i write the same thing myself only when i understand the visdal hmm. yes or no yes now bumi will never ask you to write this but this knowledge is important any question so far so sumit uh, i mean like you wrote it as soap header but here we can see soap env so is there any difference between them uh... so here what i wrote xml ns colon soap yes. yes what they have written xml ns colon so, okay that is only there so this has something to do with the name spaces and prefix for which i will talk separately at very much length okay okay Good. any doubts guys okay we, now it is your turn you will give it a try okay i did one exercise you have to give it a try we will do it right away so this visuals okay we know calculator is little easy right okay we will go and try something else mm. all right there is some visual for for what there is a visual there is a visual for currency conversion yes or no what is the root element yeah definitions definition so that does not change now do, do we know in which language the service is written anywhere in visual do we specify the underlying language of the service we don't no. specify right we don't care yeah. so that's what i told the services help in abstracting the underlying complexity and technology and that's why the services are so important right it will also help in easily collaboration of different technologies also isn't it all right so when we'll go here we will straight away jump to operation oh my god there are so many operations so many so many so many i'll not i'll not ask you the count but then there are so many operations yes or no yes yeah and and when you have so many operations then your documentation becomes important so that you understand which operation does what 
it is saying it lists the supported currencies it lists the supported currencies okay we will start with this operation let's forget about all of so can you see how many port types one port type one port type there is one more port type yeah yes but by seeing this port type do not conclude anything one one more port type yes how many port types three three right so three. some sometimes interviewer ask can we have more than one port type answer is yes now can you see for the first type, port type the name is x ignite currency soap x ignite currencies http race http get x ignite currencies http post okay now we will get into one more section okay so can you see there is something called as binding also yes. so there are some port types below can you see binding yes yes now what is binding binding is a bind, what is the meaning of bind bind means we want to talk to someone right bind means connectivity you are you are binding with someone means you are connecting and when you try to connect what are the different ways so binding is basically responsible for defining the protocol that a service consumer needs to adhere while calling the service i will repeat binding is responsible for defining the protocol a, a service consumer needs to adhere to while calling the service because so far in all these sections what you see did we talk anywhere about the protocol we just talked about the operation the operation whether it is synchronous asynchronous one way the request format the response format did we anywhere talk that whether it is soap or rest we assumed that it is soap but if you remember i told you in yesterday session also that visdal necess need not to be necessarily used for soap it can be also used for http did i mention that or not i did mention that right yes 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 so now what i am trying to say is there is a section which specifies the protocol and that section is a binding section so there is a section called as binding what is the name of the binding you can give any name so first of all you have to observe how many bindings are there binding 1 binding 2 binding 3 four. four bindings yes this binding 1 is talking to a here there is a type this is going to refer to a port type can you see it has the same name as port type okay so if you because there are so many things over here so what you do is you take this can you see here the port type name is same yes or no yes yes there is a port type and for the this port type so binding basically refers to the port type right so because eventually binding is trying to define the protocol now using the proto protocol eventually we want to access operations and operations are clubbed into port types right yes or no yes so what i'm trying to say is see port type you can see are the number of operations you can perform on a specific port so whenever you will access any machine right you will access any service there will be some port right right Correct. there will be some port on that so for that service there is a port on that port what are the operations which are we have available that is defined over here so now in this port type service there are n number of of operations list currencies list active currencies list official rates like that there are so many currencies so this binding element is basically telling that if you want to talk to or if you want to trigger any of these operations there is a binding and what is the name of the binding s x ignite currency soap just writing the name as soap does not make it soap okay i can write name as rest but still it may be soap so how do you identify whether it is soap or not just expand this can you see a transport over here what is a transport soap over http so binding what what is the transport soap over http and using this binding which operation we can trigger list action yes so for binding again it is writing which operations can you trigger you can see operation 1 operation 2 operation 3 operation 4 there are different operations you can trigger yes or no 
Yes. Are you guys following? Yeah. Yes. So here, using these bindings, I can trigger operation. And here you will see again there is a definition of operation. There is something called as a binding style also. Okay. So there is something called as a binding style. Basically, your binding style helps in defining the structure of the request. This document style is the latest style. So there are different binding styles. There is a RPC style. There is a document style. RPC is also called as remote procedure call style. So if you are doing any legacy integrations and there are some legacy SOAP services, they may have style as document style. So now what it is saying is there is an operation. Now for each operation, there is some unique name given, which is given, which is also called a SOAP action. And to, to basically trigger this action using the SOAP binding, which style we need to follow document style. Okay. And in the body, you basically send literal here. There is some definition of header also. So in the input, we can pass some header also. Don't get confused with so many things initially. Okay. What we will do is we'll take this whistle. We'll go to soap. Okay. This is little complex whistle, which is fine. No worries. All right. One, two, how many bindings? Two. two, but how many bindings were there in the code? Four bindings. Four, but you get to see only two. Why? Because two. out of those four bindings, two are not so bindings. Binding number one is a soap binding, okay. and binding number two is also soap binding. How can you check? Transport. Transport. Now you go to binding number three. Do you see anywhere soap? Which type of binding it is? It is HTTP binding, which is more like a REST service. Mm. So here it is telling operation name and that how can we access the operation? They have given that. And so can we use whistle to define REST or not? This is a live example, right? Yeah. Yes, this is a live example where you can see the REST is also defined with the help of Wizzle. Actually, we do not call it as REST. We call these as HTTP based service. If you remember yesterday, I told you that there is a, some difference between HTTP and REST also. A lot of people think and HTTP and REST are the one and the same thing, but there is a difference. So this is typically called as HTTP based services. So these are not so bindings. These are HTTP bindings. So for HTTP binding, there will be verb get and for get verb, which operation will get triggered list currencies operation will get triggered, right? So there is a HTTP operation. There is a visual operation. Similarly, you had here also, if you look at this port type, oh, sorry, not this port type binding, I'll take you to the binding again for this binding. Also, there was a soap binding, right? So here you could see that it is soap over HTTP. There was a visual operation. There was a soap operation, right? So visual operation means it refers to the operation. It refers to the operation, which is defined in the visual file. Soap operation means the operation name, which basically needs to be passed while hitting the service. So while calling the service, you will not pass this name. What name you will pass? You will pass this name. Which name you will pass? You will pass this name. I will prove you that. So for example, we go here. So we were talking about which one list currencies. Yes or no. So in the list currencies, it is asking you some details, right? This time header is populated with something or not. Automatically populated. How it is yes. automatically populated. Now you look at it in the input. What is it is saying? Soap body. And can you see there is a soap header also? Yeah. And what is the header type? There is a definition message. Yes. So that message based on that message header is formed, right? So now what I'll do is I'll just go and fire the service. What it is saying? Some failure happened. Yes or no? or maybe maximum number of unregistered requests exceeded 
some but there is some response coming it may not be a legitimate response that's fine now while we fired this service you go to the raw part in the raw part can you see the soap action can you see the soap action yes, yes. so this is the actual request which has gone to the server this is the actual request which has gone to the server so it was soap over http so which method of http has been used post post soap always uses post method only okay what is the content type text slash xml can you see some soap action also and that soap action is basically so there are so many operations right so when we pass soap action then it understands that which operation are we talking about so which operation are we talking about this operation so for this for this soap action which operation should get kicked off list currencies and it will try to match the request format with with whatever we have defined in the list currencies are you understanding i will repeat there is a binding section so binding section will help in establishing the connectivity between the source and the target at the time of the execution or on the run time this binding tag will have a very vital role to play so in the binding sections you can see that what is the protocol format right so here you can go and there is a binding section where you will have transport the transport will give you a clarity there is there will be two operation withdrawal operation and soap operation so when you have to fire the service from soap what do you have to pass soap action and that soap action is related with the which operation list currencies operation now you go to the third binding now is it a soap binding no which mm -hmm. binding it is http binding <laughs> which verb get now yeah. can you again see two operations withdrawal operation http operation now what it is saying to trigger withdrawal operation to trigger withdrawal operation what we need to pass we need to pass a resource parameter list currencies okay i am sure you some of you are aware that rest works or http works little different in case of soap the whole information is exposed with the help of operations whereas in case of rest or http the information is exposed with the help of resources and each resource will have a unique uri which is also called as uniform resource indicator so if you want to trigger list currencies what you have to do is you have to use the endpoint where is the endpoint here you will find the endpoint or not yes so which endpoint we will see http endpoint and with this http endpoint what we will do is we will add this one and what we will add where is that guys is this the one no right close is this the one no close no this is also not i'll just close unnecessary tabs okay even this is not the one okay i'll straight away come here so this is my endpoint and in this endpoint did we see uh, on the top for list currencies there is a resource path yes or no what is this resource path this one so it means if you want to trigger using rest right in case of rest i will talk all these things in detail but rest exposes all the information with the help of resources each resource will have a unique endpoint and it means you have to trigger this can you see currency list got triggered yes or no here also you got something like this currency list or maybe it is little different here you had list currencies response and what do you get over here currency list yes or no but something got triggered or not you are yes, getting some response yes so the, yes. so the point i am trying to convey is there are so many things we should get cleared after this example that when people say that whistle is only used for soap that is incorrect right 
and binding means different connectivity methods so in this we have soap 1.1 as one connective method soap 1.2 and we can also connect using only http also right so there are different protocols so in order to enter into a single service there might be different protocols you can follow so for example you go to theater in theater there will be different entry gates right it is possible or not or if you go to any auditorium there are different entry points yes so, so likewise in order to basically hit your service you can follow different protocols and those protocols are defined in which section binding binding section now this binding section is again referred in the last section okay which we, there is another element called as service element there is another element called as service element here you will have the name of the service and in the service we will define a port and port will refer the binding so whenever anybody is hitting the service they will try to go to the port right and so they will try to go to the location of the service and they will try to go to that port in port there will be a binding right and that binding will internally refer different operations and that binding can happen on a specific protocol so this all link has to establish right so here is your endpoint if you go back here this is your endpoint or not yes now to basically reach out to this endpoint there are different bindings right so can you see that name so here uh, on the top can you see there are different bindings soap soap it it is not showing you remaining two why because here when you created a project you created a soap project or a rest project soap right okay. so soap will only read soap bindings how many soap bindings were there only two soap bindings that's why it is showing you only two soap bindings so if you see over here in the service section there will be port for each binding there is a separate port or not yes for each binding there is a separate port though the service url is same so service endpoint is not changing if you see over here but the service can be accessible using these four different protocols right this each binding is related to the or, or sorry each port is related to the same binding or a different binding each port is related to a different binding if you see yes soap so one to get port right so each binding will again refer the operations operations will refer the message message will refer the elements that's how the flow is i mean generally people will not ask you to develop the visual file but if you know it is very very helpful okay. any questions please take a look at it give yourself some time so this is this is a fairly complex visual okay this is fair i mean this is fairly complex but again it, there is nothing i mean if you know the flow the only thing is it might be very exhaustive some may have only one operation some may have 100 operations but your funda will remain same your fundamentals will remain same in soap protocol which which http verb is used post right so this is the end point which you are trying to trigger you are you are passing some headers that this is the content type then you are passing soap action and then you are passing the request right so this request will go and will check whether there is a there is a binding which accepts this kind of request right if yes it will try to see which operation it is trying to trigger now how the operation is decided with the help of the soap action actually behind the scene there are many cases where soap is like http service only but then it has some rules regarding the structure that it will always have a soap envelope it can have a header it can have a body right and then which operation to trigger that is decided by soap action and whenever you have more than one operations giving the soap action is mandatory whenever you have only one operation in the visual file you may not have soap action because it will automatically go and hit 
only one operation right which is available but when you have more than one operations it is it is required to define the soap action because there can be ambiguity right you are trying to call a service you have to tell right which operation you want to call any questions guys so far okay so what we'll do is we'll take a pause over here okay i need to catch up some other very very important call so we'll continue from here next weekend meanwhile i want you to go through this right if you have any questions you can basically come back to me and we'll discuss about this and if anybody needs to talk to me one to one uh, please ping me in prior so that i can plan my time accordingly yeah? and we will we can plan to talk Sumit, yeah. We will continue next.